take a long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his light on me. I wanna take a long, I wanna walk, take with Jesus. A long, long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his love and light on me. I wanna take a long, long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his love and light on me. I wanna take a long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his light on me. I wanna take. Well, welcome back. It's Monday night. You know what that means. It's having coffee with the king with my friend Pete Wilcox, America's TV Elvis. How are you, Peter? Well, I'm pretty good. For those of you that, and there were a couple, I mean, I might have six or seven out there, said, well, when do we do it? And we said seven o'clock. We have been doing something. We're not sure exactly what. That's the wonderful world of technology. But <laughs> something wasn't plugged into the right thing. Nope. And we have been, been broadcasting live to the few people that are kind enough to follow me and say, what are you up to, Pete? We'd like to see it. Well, I think we have found it now. and We're kind of excited about that. For those of you that know me and don't know Angelo, how do you like that, Angelo? Hi, guys. I'm introducing you to my, my sweet people. Hello, sweet people. Angelo is a psychic medium and uh, a broadcaster in his own right, has several shows, and we contacted each other, ooh, I guess it's been about uh, two and a half, three years ago. About two and, years ago, yeah. And yeah. I think what happened was uh, I did one of those broadcasts on my birthday and uh, sent out to my friends, and Angelo caught it, says, I know who Pete Wilcock is, let me watch this, called me up, said, hey, uh, I do some broadcasting as well, and I think I might be able to help you, kind of guide you along, see if I can be of assistance. And we have enjoyed ourselves so much, but I have to honestly say we have been missing you because when I check our Facebook attendance, it's down around 16 or 17. That's not quite the group I'm trying to reach. I love them. Though you 16 and 17 are going to heaven. That's a promise just for helping us along. But for the for the rest of you who um, might be locked into this live share, I'm so excited because something very different has changed in my life that uh, I would like to share with you. And I did, well, you know, it's funny. I swear, Angelo, everything we've talked about, we can start all over. Could, these people haven't heard any of it. Well, I'll tell you what, Pete, let's just, let, before you, you tell your story, um, because people really want to hear you, because uh, I'm going to I'm going to bow out of this conversation in a minute. Um, what I want everybody to do is go to Pete Wilcox's Facebook page. You're going to see a link on that page that says "What's the Buzz." All right. Now there's a link there, and it's the same link. It's going to be the same link every week. It'll never change. That "What's the Buzz" link. You will be able to see Pete Week Wilcox. Every Monday night, having coffee with the king, uh, giving you a, a video Bible study, if you will. Um, Pete may, from time to time, bring a guest in to talk with you uh, or, or just somebody to kibitz around with, and that's all good. But And maybe once in a while, you'll see my ugly face around here. But uh, once in a while, I'll pop in and have a, you know, play debate with Pete. You know, we enjoy playing off of each other like that. I enjoy, I enjoy it. I just like to get you riled up sometimes. <laughs> well, well, you no, know, I do too. It makes the circulation go, and, and we feed off each other rather well, yes. I think. and it keeps you young. And it keeps you young. Okay. And that's all about keeping as young as you can. Now, yep. um, so it's having coffee with the king every Monday at 7 p.m., on Pete Wilcox's Facebook page, we are also on What's the Buzz, What's the Buzz podcast, and on YouTube, What's the Buzz. So, uh, and if you can't find it, just look for the Wrestling with the Future podcast network. There we are. 
Well, you know what I'm going to do also? You'll be kind enough to send me, you know, when we get off all the paperwork on this, and I will then make a little sticker, and for a couple of weeks I'll put it up on, on Facebook so you guys will have it uh, and know that is what's going on. Because I, I'm, I'm so excited about reaching out and touching you, sharing some, some new ideas and things I'm going through. So we'll follow up on this. I'm, I'm excited we're Absolutely. breaking through Absolutely. I'm excited for you, Pete. And I'll tell you what, um, I am going to get my ugly face out of here. I am going to, you guys are going to see Pete enveloping the entire screen right now. And, uh, oh my God, that's a fate worse than death. I'm sorry, guys. Here I am. <laughs> yeah. So Peter, I am, uh, I'm going to, eyebrows down. I'm going to turn it over to you. I am going to mute my mic and, uh, have a great show, brother. Break a leg. Well, okay. And for those of you that have been with me through the years, thank you so very, very much for doing that. Um, there's been a serious and an exciting change in my life. For those of you that know me, I have been about show business and entertaining. It has been what I've done with my life since, gee, I, since I got out of high school, went in the army. And, uh, Wow, that, that's another whole show, as a matter of fact. I may pull that back out. We'll, we'll figure out a way to do this. Um, but in my, in my life and in my walk, I went from a nightclub performer to a rock and roll kind of guy. I kind of stepped out of show business for a while. I was studying acting for about five years in, in uh, Los Angeles with one of the greatest teachers that ever came down the pipe. And... I was just about to go to New York. He suggested, Pete, if you're really serious, I think you need to go to New York. And uh, that's they have a more serious acting tone there. If you got into theater, I said, then perhaps you can make a transition. And I, you know, I didn't know. I was talking it over with my mom, who I've been blessed enough and fortunate enough to be living with at the time. He said, well, Pete, if that's what you have to do, okay. That week. That week, Elvis passed away. We lost him. Well, for those of you that have been with me, you know that I did his voice for television. When you see Happy Days and you hear Elvis on the radio, usually on a jukebox in the, you know, at the malt shop with Fonzie, Fonzie will hit the jukebox and Elvis sings. That's not Elvis. That's me. I was able to get that job. A uh, dear friend of mine, uh, knew the man who contracted the, the sound of like voice. You see, if they use a star, oh my God, they got to pay thousands. Where they get a sound like you get what they call union scale, which is very decent, but you know, it's like 150 as opposed to 10,000. So they use sound likes for a lot of it. Well, it opened the door for me because I got a reputation. Oh, he's the guy who does Elvis for Laverne and Shirley in Happy Days. When we lost Elvis, something in me said, there's going to be a movie about him. There's going to be something special. Somebody didn't just die. It's almost like something just died. Elvis wasn't a personality in America. He was an icon. I don't like the word institution because that... It doesn't sound warm enough. He was a force in America, in American culture. Um, Peter Jennings, wonderful newsman, said in his mind, Elvis was the most impactful individual in the 20th century. Well, I just went crazy. I said, God bless Elvis and God bless Peter Jennings for saying that. I don't know if that's quite right. There's some other people that maybe Martin Luther King, maybe JFK. I'm not sure. There were some wonderful people that had wonderful effects on us all, but he certainly was a dynamic individual. So I knew a project is going to come up. Um, at the time I had a beard, I was kind of Chris Christopherson looking. A part of that was because uh, as a young man, I always had an Elvis look about me and it stopped me several times. Uh, I was going to go to, um, I went to several casting directors. I had a very good connection to a uh, studio. And the casting director just came right up to the cat and said, I'm sorry, you look too much like Elvis. Well, in a way, that's silly. 
Could you take a, a soap opera like Days of Our Lives or something, a guy popped up in town and looked like Elvis? That wouldn't be a bad thing. Might turn heads, might get viewers. You never know what could happen. Anyway, it didn't happen. And so I was sudden I grew a beard to kind of get a different look about me. I started writing my own songs, trying to get into a... The guys that were leading me were Mac Davis, Chris Christopherson, Neil Diamond, James Taylor. And then I wish you'd say my name. I wish I could have been in that company of singer-songwriters, kind of writing about their own life, their own view, their take on life. And hopefully through your work and through your writing, you make that connection to the audience and you become their friend. You become part of their life as well. That's what I wanted. But I put all that on hold when we lost Elvis because I thought, you know, I have a feel for this man and I always have. I've always had a love and a feel for him. And I think I could bring something to the character that nobody else could. Kind of full of myself on that one. And yet it was a voice in me that said that. It made me really believe that. Um, I grew up in his era. I was 12 years old when he hit. I was a teenager that was enthralled with him. I'm the same age as John Lennon and, and Paul McCartney. John Lennon said before Elvis there was nothing. He adored Elvis, but he and Paul got into songwriting at first when they, in way back, way back when they were just little rock and rollers, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Elvis, the whole deal. But they knew we're going to have to write our own songs if we're going to do anything. And they did. They were wonderful. John, John Lennon was quite an inspiration to me as well. He really helped our generation sense. You can do it. You can write these rock and roll songs. A story about that was um, they were down in London and they were having a party and the Rolling Stones were there and Mick and John knew each other. Hey, how you doing? He said, man, we need a song for our album. You got anything? And John said, well, just hang on. He and Paul went in the other room and wrote him a song. Came back, gave it to him. I don't know which one it was. And Mick learned, looked at Keith and said, did you see what they just did? It took them 10 minutes to knock out a song. We got to get busy. Well, those two wrote some of the greatest rock blues songs of all time. So that's what I said. The Beatles kind of inspired us all to write our own material, write our own. And the singer-songwriter bloomed in the 70s. That's when we got John Denver and Neil and Mac Davis, Chris Christopherson, James Taylor. That's when we, we wanted to celebrate those artists. Okay, that was what I wanted to be. But when Elvis passed, I felt like destiny whispered in my ear, there's a project for you here. It's going to lead you somewhere. And it truly did. Uh, I have spent over 40 years paying tribute to Elvis in my nightly show, in my TV, in my TV work, in my record work. It's been a blessing. It has been a blessing. And uh, although I didn't get to do some of the things I really wanted to, um, I'll give you an example. Dick Clark did that movie of Elvis, remember, about a year after he passed. And I was already involved with some people that wanted to do an Elvis movie. And it was written by um, uh, Ed Parker, Elvis's karate guy. And Ed was a dream. He said, that's my guy right there. I like Pete Wilcox. I want him to be Elvis. So I was locked in. They were looking at people, and the Dick Clark people called my management team and said, we'd like to see Pete Wilcox. And they said, we're well, going to have to fly him in. He's playing in Tahoe. So we have too many people. We're not flying anybody in. If you want him to read for this, you need to get him in here. And the fact of the matter is my management team didn't want me to do that movie. They wanted me to do their movie, which never happened. God only knows why. I don't think they... You know how you know people and they can't quite tie a ribbon on a project? That's what I think we had. Uh, they were wonderful people. Ed was such a, a loving man and so encouraging to me. But they just didn't happen. But what it did do was it gave me momentum. I did a bunch of TV shows. I, I did Cheers, Designing Women, Murphy Brown, L.A. Law, ALF, Char Charles in Charge, ER, Touched by an Angel. Uh, it just goes on and on. 
And I, like I said, I was so blessed. Hollywood was funny. Once they, you know, once you go in and you're the guy, or well, call a guy that was on Hogan Family. Call a guy that was on, you know, and that's what happened. So that connected with my work in Legends and Concert and uh, Superstars and other shows. I was down in Pigeon Forge, which was a lovely time. Pigeon Forge, that's where the story is going, by the way, where I was working with Charlie Hodge. Charlie Hodge, for you Elvis fans, was the little guy on stage that gave Elvis scarves, water, played guitar, and sang with him. There was a harmony, like Suspicious Minds. He's a voice right over, right over Elvis, you know, doing the harmony with him. Okay. Well, my life led me down many paths, and I met Charlie, and uh, a job came up in Tennessee in a theater he was in called Memories Theater, right down the street from Dollywood. Wonderful place, had a, an amazing time, and they had a problem with their Elvis performer. They didn't mesh anymore. So I got the call, we'd like to see you. They flew out to Vegas, saw me, offered me the job. Kind of challenging because I had to leave Vegas, which was my home, and I I loved it. I had a beautiful home in Vegas, and I thought, oh, my mom just moved in with me there, and this is going to be something. But the money was really enticing, so I went. While I was there, there was nothing to do during the day. I It's a real slow town. People go there if you can dig this, to see the leaves turn color in the fall. Say, oh my God, you know that old joke about the town is so slow, people sit on the front porch and watch the oxen fall in the mud? Pigeon Forge can be like that. There's a couple of theaters, but that's it. Restaurant, theaters, leaf changing. It's right next door to that wonderful city called Gatlinburg, which is the same thing. They're beautiful, and people come from miles around during the season. Well, I didn't have much to do during the day. I started watching Christian television. It was what was on most of the time. Now, I grew up in a very Christian family. My dad and I served on the altar. You know, the, the old thing, I said, well, I was an altar boy. I was a classic altar boy. I served on the altar with my dad. Um, and the church was so powerful in our family that as a young man, that was one of the things that I thought about. Do I belong in this walk? Maybe this is where I belong. Well, what turned me away from everything was rock and roll music. It was so much fun. And I had a knack for it. I was have always been a very decent singer. Not a great one. Not a great one. But a decent one. And... God has blessed me with a certain outgoing personality that seems to get response. What we call that is charisma. And it just kind of is or it is. You know how there's some people in your life you kind of watch and some, they're there, but you don't really watch them. I was one of the ones that people kind of watched. So it worked for me. I was always working as a musician entertainer. It worked for me. So I'm watching this Christian television. <clears throat> and it reopens my thoughts. It reopens my heart. I was a bit of a party boy. I'm in rock and roll music, and I'm doing Elvis Presley. So if there's a party, they want the Elvis guy. And I'll, I'll let it go with that. You can imagine that it was a lot of fun being the Elvis guy. But it... it uh, Something wasn't working working out for me. It wasn't ringing right. And I saw some of these wonderful TV preachers. Some are evangelists. Some are just teachers, pastors. And they had a they had a a joy about them, an excitement, and they were so into the word and so into the stories of the Old Testament and New Testament and what the preachings were and what was said and what Jesus did. And I, as a boy, I'd always been fascinated by that. I loved the stories of Jesus. I just thought he was the most beautiful thing ever. But like I said, it was replaced by rock and roll music and testosterone and, and, and becoming a teenage boy. Come on, we go a little nuts. But these preachers really rang a bell with me, and I started thinking, if I was blessed 
with enough charisma to hold your attention for an hour saying, don't be cruel. How much better would it be if I could deliver the word of God to you? How much better would that be for you? And really for me as well. And I thought, wow, I need to investigate this. So I studied the word more. I studied Bible colleges, where I might go, what I could do, what I would have to teach, what I'd have to learn, what I'd have to be able to share. And uh, the job in Tennessee came to an end. And I came back to Las Vegas and found a church family there. And I was very dedicated to it. I had a church in mind, a a church school that I was going to go to and went to a couple of um, meetings, camp meetings there at at the Bible school. And I liked it very much. And uh, one evening, a message sermon kind of came down on me and I wasn't happy with what I heard. And I started thinking maybe this isn't quite right for me. I'm not sure. And I was in a um, rather volatile marriage at the time. And uh, lovely girl, lovely woman. She and I were like water and oil. Just no matter how you stir it, it's not going to be quite right. And we lovingly kind of stepped apart. And when we did, that also stepped into my church life, and I kind of stepped back into entertainment and music, into where I felt comfortable. Well, uh, that kind of, I kind of stayed there for, for several years, kind of wandering in my head, wandering in my mind. And about Mm, less than 10. It might, be, it might have been about 10 years ago, I really started watching Ancient Aliens and some of these wonderful shows that talk about what might have happened, what could have happened. And I got into that questioning, searching thing, New Age religions, uh, the wonderful thing about the secret, the, the law of attraction. What's so funny about some of these I, and I want to hit that right now. You take a book like The Secret. It's a wonderful book. talks about the love of attraction. The book itself tells you the premise came from a sermon that Jesus gave in the book of Matthew. Most of the New Age looks at life. If you examine them, you will see that that's somebody rewriting the words of Jesus. There aren't too many new lessons, and there aren't too many things that Jesus didn't cover. That's something for us to remember in in a place that I will try to always go and help kind of usher us back in together. Um, My new place in my life, I don't know that I would ever be a pastor or a blanket minister. I don't know that that's in me. What I feel like is I'm kind of like a guy that kind of helps nudge the sheep and myself back towards Jesus, back towards the word and the feel of God. Let's not forget why we're here. Let's not forget what we can do. And for many, many years, I was all about me. What I wanted, my clothes, my cars, my toys. And they were great fun. And I enjoyed them. But in the end, they didn't bring me what I needed. They didn't bring me what you might say an everlasting connection. And that's funny because I'm sitting in a room. One time, one day I should take you around and I'll show you all the memorabilia I have in this room. It's absolutely a boy's dream come true. But it reminds me of something that is in the Old Testament. I think it's Ecclesiastes, is is the book of Solomon, and Solomon wrote Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. He was credited for being the wisest man who ever lived to that point, the wealthiest, 
the most influential. He had hundreds of wives. He had any pleasure that he wanted. He was a kind man. He was a, a, a wisdom. Just a stole story. Remember the story about the, the two women that claim, claimed the baby? And the one woman said, uh, oh, this is mine. And the other said, it's mine too. And Solomon said, cut the baby in half and give half to each one. And one woman said, yeah. And the other one said, oh, no. No, no, God, no, don't do that. Let her have the baby. Well, Solomon said, give the baby to that woman. That's the woman who loves the child. This other woman just wants her way. That's very clever that he thought that. He said, well, anybody think of that? I don't know that everybody would think of it, but he did. He said, of all my riches, of all my wealth, doesn't mean anything. As a young man, he became extremely fascinated with a woman. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Sheba. You know, the story of Solomon and Sheba, the beautiful woman who came up from Africa. And there was an amazing love affair there. He built temples to her God and helped her be whatever she wanted. And then finally, she fell in love with his God and went back to her country. And he stayed there and was Solomon. But for a period in his life, he stepped away from a regimented walk with God. And he said he kind of lost it when he did. To come back and have that feeling, the presence of God, he says, if you don't have God in your life, you don't have anything. Because all these other things are nothing. They can blow away. Jesus tells us that. Build up treasures for your life in heaven, not on the earth, where men can break in and steal. Like all these toys, these wonderful things that I have here. They can, uh, somebody could break in and steal them when I, when I was at work one night or if I was on the road wouldn't change me. It may it'd be sad that I lost them, but it wouldn't change my walk with God. Every treasure that's in my heart or beliefs that I have, that's still there. You can't take them. And that thinking, that application of self to a spiritual side, to what we are a part of, is what I have become. And uh, in that, I started talking about that. I had uh, a couple of revelations that I would love to share with you. But I may have pulled your tail quite a bit already. I don't want to wear you out tonight. I want to have, um, I want this to continue. What this came out of was an idea of coffee with the king. How about... We get a scripture, we'll read it, a little one, a little passage. We'll talk about what it means, what it might mean, and then I leave you with the thoughts of, now you put your ideas together with it as well. What I may have said, we might read something, I might read you something that maybe Billy Graham added to that, or maybe another famous teacher. That, I don't mean famous, but you know what I mean. It's somebody who we respect. And we, we, we listen to what they have to say. We know that they've dedicated their life to studying it. So they probably have a bit more insight. And um, we were going to do that. Bless you, say a prayer, and let you go. Well, in the last maybe six months, I guess, maybe six months, Angelo and I have had an awful lot of fun getting together, talking about that batting the ball over the net, back and forth, back and forth. And it's taken on several different avenues and venues. So it doesn't really have a format, and that's okay, too. That's okay, too. Jesus didn't have a format. He sat down. How are you guys doing? I would say Beatitudes. I think he knew what he was doing there. But there were things that came to him that he wanted to share and and with his people and the and the lovely people that followed him and want to hear his word. Well, we'd kind of like to do that. I certainly would. There was something I was going to talk about healing uh, today. Um, my wife has a condition, fibro. I don't say, oh, I'm saying fibro. I can't think of the name of it. I don't say it right. Fibro. Oh, 
I don't know what I, I'm sorry. I don't know the last half of it, but we, it's something that's quote unquote incurable at the moment. Well, for those of us that walk with the Lord and with God, we know anything is curable with him. Anything. Um, I heard a wonderful story about a preacher's wife and a heart problem that she has. I, I should, I could tell you that it would get another half hour. I don't want to do that to you. But there was there's a healing, a process of healing that the church recognizes and St. Peter talks about, that Jesus talked about. And my wife and I applied that today for the first time. I'll give you a cue because I don't want to get into it today. I want to give it its own time, but I'm going to share something with you. This is oil. And we have the power, all of us, to bring things like this to your house, your children, your life, Bring him before the Lord. Ask his blessing. We've asked blessing on the soil. We are told in the in the New Testament to anoint the sick. Pray over them. And I feel bad that I didn't do that for my wife. And today we went about that. And I'll we'll do that whole thing. There's another thing I want to share with you, and that's communion. Jesus at the Last Supper asked the twelve. Do this in remembrance of me. Break bread, share wine together, remember what we have, remember what we did, and know that this is eternal. Do this in remembrance of me. Most churches have it once a month. Uh, I grew up in an Episcopalian. We do it once a week. Catholics, once a week. Sometimes those two churches will do it twice a week. My wife and I try to do it every day. You can have communion in your home. Single single parent, single mom, single dad, you can do it. A family, how blessed is that? You get your family together. You have a little communion in the morning before they go to school, before you go to work. Your day and life will change, I promise you. I promise you. But that will be uh, one of the days that we will have together. And there will be more. There will be many things that we'll talk about and nothing. Sometimes just uh, yesterday was Mother's Day and it was a lot of fun and maybe just reflecting on moms. And maybe as I reflect on my mom, that'll make you reflect on your mom. And Angelo will help us get away that you can send in messages to me and then I can go over some of them and say, well, I got some mail and they want to talk about this and we will. This is going to be an ongoing journey. Having coffee with the king, stopping your day for a minute, hoping, praying that perhaps I can come up with a theme or a topic, something that will boost and strengthen your day, your life. I hope that I can give you a word that's like a wrench. The Bible is like a toolbox, and those words and the sentences and and the frame of mind and his axioms, his truths, when you apply them to life, your life changes and it goes right. If you try to reach under the hood of your car and fix your car, you can't. You need tools. And the tools in life for the believers or the people of faith is the word of God, his guidance, his promises. And I would like to share them with you. I'd like to make that journey with you. And uh, we can do it. Watch how I do this. We can do that by having coffee with the king. How about that? That wasn't bad, was it? And speaking of that, I happen to have a cup of coffee. I use that having coffee with the king, of course, because it'll play on Elvis, and that's what I've done. And Jesus is without a doubt the king. We are told when his kingdom comes, he will be, it will be his kingdom. But for the real Staunch Elvis fans that still like to call him the king. Let's play the game for a minute. Jesus is also referred to as the king of kings. So why can't we have a king of rock and roll? I'm just saying. If we did. But Elvis was such a doll about that. Such a doll. He came out on stage and a fan, Elvis, you're the king. He said, no. There's only one king, and that's Jesus. And that's something else that came to me by doing Elvis through the years 
is he reminded me of the spirituality. He give you two. I'm going to give you three Elvis uh, wings, and then I'm going to call Angelo back in and give you a kiss goodbye and get out of here. When his career was in the bloom and an explosion, don't be cruel, hound dog, he stopped on the Ed Sullivan Show and sang Peace in the Valley because his mother wanted him to. Sang Peace in the Valley. Everybody said, Elvis is going to kill you. It's a gospel song. You're right. I'm going to sing this song. Okay, go ahead. RCA Victor wanted to drop him when he wanted to do um, his first gospel album. Isn't it funny? That's the only gospel album. That's the only album he got a Grammy for. Greatest rock and roll singer in history. Never won a Grammy. But he did for his gospel. And when he did his shows, 20,000 people there. He'd stop in the middle of the show. And his boys would sing a gospel song. He wouldn't even sing. He would just stand there and bless them with it. And then they'd follow that with how great thou art. Elvis was putting people and aiming them at the Lord. 20,000 people that night went to see Elvis, but they were reminded about their walk with God. And all the last one, uh, Rex Hummel, Rex Hummel rather, was a... A uh, TV preacher and a, pre a preacher and pastor on his own. And Elvis said to him, I'm thinking about stopping a rock and roll and just doing Christian music. He said, oh, no, 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 Elvis, don't do that. You have such a wonderful group of people that come to you, and you lead them in your own way to Jesus. You just keep being Elvis. And Charlie and I, we talked about, I said, gee, if, if he had done that, he might still be with us. He might have been able to save his life. Who's to know? Okay, one more little cutie. There's a famous picture called Honoring the Point. Here we go. It's a hunting dog who's pointing at another hunting dog who's pointing at a pheasant. In my way, in my humble way, I feel like I'm bringing my gospel attention and the attention that I've been getting back to Elvis and to the attention he gave to Jesus. And along the way, it's also okay for me to point to Jesus. And that's what we're going to do. Let's do that together. Let's have some fun. We'll have coffee with the king. I hope that that will send you out in your day or night. I drink coffee before I go to bed, Tay, too. It's warm. It's nice. doesn't keep me away. It tastes like hot coffee ice cream the way I make it. But I want to be a part of your life. And you've been kind enough to invite me. For those of you that have been, so I got some people out there have been with me 50 years. Dear God, how I, I love you for that. And let's do it together. Let's, let's have this walk. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to check and see if my guardian angel is uh, in the other room ringing a bell. Is he? Look at that. Came just in, having my coffee with the king. It just came in like Gabriel. Bang! There he is. How are you guys? Well, you know what? I really... By the way, I have to tell you, I watched the entire show on Pete Wilcox's Facebook page, and you never looked better. Oh, my God. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll... I'll I think that we, we have a nice format. You're, you're so kind because whenever we get in a jackpot or what should we do this week? You and I can bat around life and, and the Republicans and the Democrats and the, and the everybody's. And we stay out of everybody's hair. We don't pick sides. Nope. But uh, we're living in treacherous times, my friends. Treacherous I'm, on, I'm on one side, baby. I'm on God's side. That's Absolutely. And this is a great time to get on that side. We might get surprised quicker than you know by the things that are going on in in the world. And uh, I mean, I, it's funny. I got this one friend of mine. He's, he's a, quite a Bible thumper. And we were on a, on, on a phone one night talking. And after talking about the rapture, and he says, unless it comes during his phone call. And I said, that wouldn't bother me. Wait a minute. Let me get Linda in here because if it happens, I want her on the bed with me. Come on, honey. <laughs> but. <laughs> 
it is going to happen. It might happen in our lifetime. It's it's a possibility. It really is. It seems like it because the predictions that Jesus made are almost falling into place. They are falling into place, and I got news for you. They are going to fall uh, in place. But... It would not be out of the realm of possibility for the for that event, that historic and catastrophic event. I say catastrophic because it would literally mean the death knell for some people. Oh, absolutely. But um, I'll tell you what, though. It, they say that uh, if you're prepared, and you know if you're prepared or not, you know, it's just that walk you have with Jesus. You know whether you're prepared, whether or not that it's your time. You know, um, we'll, we'll, that's another thing that we will go through. We will talk about what born again is, uh, dedicating your life. Oh, yeah. When you dedicate your, your, your life back to God, that doesn't mean you're going to be Billy Graham or Sister Teresa or start no. a ministry. It <laughs> no. just means you're embracing where you came from, who created right. you, and you will say, oh, I think I would like to do it your way. You're the one who made me. Well, you know, I've said it before, Peter. You know, I'm a hot mess, but you know, God loves me that way. Yes, and what he what he likes about all of us is trying to get better. Exactly. Get better. The word repent. A lot of people. There's a lot of words that have really strange connotations on them, oh, and yeah. we try to ease them as well. Repent yeah. is one of those words. It it just means try. I will tell people the struggle, Peter, is real. The struggle is real. There are some people who who love the Lord with their heart and soul and and struggle every day to stay on the straight and narrow. Sometimes they backslide. Sometimes they fall way off the mark. But every day is a new day. Every day is a walk with, with Jesus. Every Every day. It's a new day renewed and fresh walk every single day and it should be well and and i i again I, to get back to where i was kind of rolling is the only thing he asks is that you try he knows you're gonna slip keep trying i'll be here keep trying and that's all that's all he asked he gave his life my my what he did for us is unbelievable, and he's and he said, "Just tr do, try for me, please mm -hmm. try." That's it. You can do that. We can all do that. That can happen. And Billy Graham was so lovely when he said, "He said, he said, I have to tell you, I know if I'm to die tonight, that I'm going to go to heaven. We should all know that. It's an easy thing to know." It's an easy thing to achieve. Are you going to be perfect once you decide? No. Nope. But you are trying. You are trying. That makes you perfect in the eyes of God. It's like God hates sin, but he loves a sinner. He loves every single one. Even, I'm going to say even Putin. Putin is clearly a butcher, a murderer, a thief. There's no question about it. Let's not buff it. But God still loves even him. He even loves, he doesn't like what he's doing. He abhors what he's doing. What Putin is doing is almost like the handiwork of Satan, the handiwork of a personification of evil. God still loves him. Will he answer for that? I would not want to be in Putin's shoes because Putin does not have a sense of repentance. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's probably the right thing for him. He's not doing the right thing for humanity, and we know that. No. And that's a trial that he will live. You and I will not live that. But I'm just using his as an example, as, as, as wicked as somebody could be. He still loves the person. He hates his wickedness. Mm -hmm. And can he bring that to God's kingdom? I would not want to be in his shoes. I'm glad because he's not living a Christian life. A Christian life means trying. I'm trying to be like you, Jesus. I'm trying to do what you've asked of me or that you've guided me and said, 
here's how you need to do that. Okay, I mean, I'll see if I can. That's all he's asking. One day at a time, Pete. Yeah, I came here. I healed you people. I taught you. I called the dead. I gave eyesight to the blind so that you would listen to me, so you would know, where did this man come from? Where does he get these words and wisdom? Then I will surrender my life to the, one of the most horrific, painful, tragic deaths a man can endure. Before it came, he told you it was coming. He told you, I'll be back in three days. And he was. To say, you can believe in me. You can trust me. Look what I did for you. And with that in mind, kind of changed everything for me. The things that I thought were important, no longer quite so important. I mean, we do what we do. You've got talents. You've got a gift. You can, you're can. you a mechanic. You work on cars. You're a teacher. You teach kids in school. You're a salesperson. You're taking care of your family. You're an entertainer. You sing and try to make people happy. But there's a different beat in your rhythm. You're treating humanity different. You're after different things. Different things are important to you. We'll go through some of them. We'll have a wonderful journey together. And my friend Angelo will help guide us through it and ring the bell when it's time for recess. And <laughs> I'm very tickled that we're doing this. This is really a fresh start. Good. Yeah, I feel like we practiced for a couple of months. Hey, look, practice makes perfect. Well, you know what I mean? We practiced for a couple of months, got our chops together. Because mm -hmm. there were some stories that I wanted to tell, even a couple I want to retell. You say, well, I already heard that story. Well, the Bible's like that. A lot of stories. Absolutely. The dress rehearsal. A couple of stories you want to hear more than once. You may not Absolutely. have gotten them. Yeah. Well, anything to say to anyone before we leave? Uh, you want to give them um, our email and if you uh, by the way you guys if you have questions for pete send them to wrestling with the future at gmail.com uh or you can send them to uh to pete wilcox uh pete you want to tell them everybody your email address yes, will. You if you would like to send me a question and it'll come in on my email then i'll know somebody's listening and i will get to that question my email is pete wilcox with two l's w-i-l-l-c-o at pete wilcox at ymail.com, like Gmail, except it's a Y. It's Yahoo. They ran out of numbers, so they went, we'll call it Ymail. Pete Wilcox at ymail.com. And if you've got something you'd like us to investigate or talk about, um, we'd love to hear from you. We really, really would. But, the, you, know, you know, and the other thing is funny. What do we do? Uh, and, it, you know, I usually take this because it's a lovely shot, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pass the ball this week to Angelo and ask him to have a parting prayer for us, and then we'll kind of get out of here. But I want to thank you so much for giving us your time today. May God bless you. Thank you. Angelo. Heavenly Father, thank you again uh, for the opportunity to gather in your name and to have fellowship with each other and with our brothers and sisters watching across the country. Father, we ask you to heal the sick. We ask you, Lord, to give health to those who need health. Give patience to those that are, uh, that are tattered and torn and, uh, and frail in spirit. Give them strength. Give us all, Lord God the opportunity to serve you better. Give us our true calling. Show us what our calling is. If we don't know what it is, open us up and let us be receptive to what you have for us. I ask this and more in your precious son's name. And Lord God, I ask you to continue to watch over Pete and Linda and guide them heal their infirmities, give them wisdom, and give them abundant strength to continue to do your work as we have coffee with our king every Monday night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
That was lovely. Thank you. Okay. I guess we'll see you guys next week. I sure hope so. Well, this is how we do it. On behalf of Pete Wilcox, I'm Angelo DeCipio. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. I want to take a long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his light on me. I want to take a long walk with Jesus. A long, long walk with Jesus. Let him shine his light on me. Let him shine his love and light on me. I want to take. Let it shine his 